Welcome to the Candy Shop Show of the Diamond Network. Yes, it's August 24th, 2016, and we've got some uh, exciting information to share with our friends uh, live online and later on YouTube. So uh, I'm going to be uh, sharing some treats from the candy jar, and and uh, but but. Uh, uh, first things first is just to thank and welcome our galactic friends and just uh, relax. And, you know, if you're at home later listening on YouTube, I mean, just put the dishcloth down and just sit down and just take a deep breath and let's calm ourselves. I am continuing to sun gaze and I just had a wonderful sun gaze ritual this morning. Uh, I'm up to 170 seconds of staring directly into the sun uh, early in the morning, a uh, few minutes after sunrise, and it's just so peaceful and wonderful. You know, as I set my intentions for my pineal gland to to enlarge, and uh, I encourage folks uh, to, to take a look and see if sun gazing would work in your lifestyle. Okay, so I'm going to ask our friend Sunny from uh, Northern California to help us affirm the law of one. Sunny? Thank you, Candy. Certainly am glad and honored to do that. And we invite all the angels and all our guidance, guides and guardians and earth spirits to join us here in this healing energy late summer healing energy, and I will now affirm the law of one, that we are all one. When one is harmed, all are harmed. When one is helped, all are helped. Therefore, in the name of who I am, and I am one with all there is, I ask that only that which is the highest good of all happen here and now, and I give thanks that this be done, and so it is. So be it. So be it. Ah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sunny, and 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 uh welcome to the Galactics and, 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 and the inspirations that that I and my listeners are receiving and and boy, what kind of candy jar treats should I share uh this evening? It's just it's just amazing the little bit of help that I'm that I'm having in in my daily life, I, I'm wondering if uh, if folks are noticing that it, we're in more in 5D and you're, we're getting more of a connection uh, with our guardian angels and the ETs that are that are helping. It's just like uh, I, I'm just uh, I have traditionally had trouble, you know, I lose things and can find them, but but uh, not finding them immediately. But I am, you know, when I listen, I I am getting inspired to uh, open a particular drawer or look in a particular place and and find something. And just sometimes in the nick of time, uh, have I found some things? Of course, I give a lot of credit to my dear husband Les, who's who's passed over for for helping me and laughing at me and 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 and, and the pickles I can get myself into. But uh, um, I've been talking about uh, the web box and, and Cliff High's predictions. And, you know, on August 18th, he said, watch Italy, watch Italy. And uh, sure enough, we had that big earthquake this morning uh, there. I, I don't know if the national media this morning, they were not talking about the earthquake that happened a few hours later in Burma, which was much larger than, than uh, you know, it was a 6.8 reported, 
it's 6.2 in Italy. It's uh, it's a shame uh, that those folks are going through those things. Uh, of course, web bots were saying that 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 these kinds of things would be happening and and more that would shake up and the uh, and and topple the Italian uh, banking system. And of course, the Galactics want us to, to get rid of this awful banking system, and so it's it's got to come down uh, so that they can replace things uh, and uh, and and the Cliff thinks that that it'll begin to fall in in uh, in Europe, starting starting with Italy soon. So, uh, and of course, he's predicting these big changes with the the Democratic Party and what all will be happening the third week in uh, September. Now, he wasn't talking about the debate, but uh, from uh, our show and the Galactics and other places, you know, we we hear that there's going to be, uh, you know, that that Hillary representing the cabal will not be able to uh, make a presentation at the debate, and this is going to be fairly shocking. So uh, it, it is it's it's time to stop, start maybe watching the news. It's all all these exciting little. Things are going to be happening. Uh, um, I've been continuing uh, to uh, travel uh, with my Bitcoin business as I'm running around helping people. Very interesting to meet different people that are that are that that don't have any faith in uh, our financial system and are trying to figure out. How to get more of their assets into into Bitcoin, and just just uh, all kinds of things going on. But I I think I want to uh, make the candy jar sh- treat short because I've got some questions to ask of of the Galactics, and I know that we're all anxious to uh, hear from Chris. So I'm going to put the lid back on the jar, and uh, Christopher. Uh, oh, welcome. What state are you calling from tonight? Uh, I'm calling from uh, Arizona tonight. Good, good. Well, you know, I was from born in Los Angeles and and uh, really enjoyed the, the West when I was young. And uh, I think you're going to be in, enjoying it, too, more and more. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's it's very nice here. There's actually it's fall conditions right now. It's not hot out like it would be in the South or in Nebraska. Uh, it is it's actually only about the lower 70s right now. So I was outside a little bit ago, and the rain is even cold. I was out there and got showered on a little bit. And, and well, yes. That's even uh, cold. Uh, I mean, Webbox says that that we're not going to have a fall. We're going to be going straight to to winter, and and we can see the signs. I mean, the black walnuts are dropping from the trees here in August. They're not supposed to drop until late September, and 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 we can just feel the signs that that uh, it it's going to be chilly much much earlier than usual. Well, do you have a a reading that you've done uh, recently that you want to? Chair, or, or are we going to ask a, a, a galactic to come in live with the information? Um, actually, yeah, I was going to do that because there are two that uh, that have shown up this evening already. They tend to sometimes gather before shows, knowing that I'm going to be on them. So, uh, yeah, there are two here already. Um, one is known to everybody, and that's a Bendigoth uh, from Agarth, the Agarthan council and the other one is a newcomer and he's a uh, big viking warrior by the name of uh, vlar so uh um see what they have to say if uh, i don't know if you had any set questions or not for them for the galactics but uh i know abendigoth had a had a uh 
purpose here, uh, big purpose here tonight. Vlar was just he just noticed that uh, he had an open forum to say whatever he wanted. So <laughs> uh, it's fine, it's fine. Well, I, I will say that I had the opportunity to finally uh, watch um, uh, Independence Day two, mm-hmm. and I. I had forgotten that the first independence started, uh, came out 20 years ago exactly in 1996. And, and of course, it's about this big uh, uh, intergalactic war and, 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 and humans uh, didn't do too well. And, 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 then, uh, and then the movie, it's about the... the uh, that E.T. is coming back and um, trying to um, cause more havoc with with uh, Earth and um, the um, humans. And, and 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 I know that on our show here, Chris, you have said that there really was uh, a big war uh, that the Archons others led against humans, mm-hmm. and that humans really did lose uh, in in 96. Isn't, isn't that correct? Yeah, it was more more or less on a different in a different density or wavelength. But yeah, in the in the late 90s, at the time of uh, of uh, Independence Day, even though it, that was the cabal pretty much saying they were going to show a fake alien invasion. There were some extra draconian and arconian forces that did come through on an energetic level, and I found out that they're only uh, the they're actually getting rid of the rest of that particular batch now. It's taken them that long to get rid of it. That's why you feel the energy raising a lot more. But uh, also the whole purpose when we're on the subject of Independence Day, I watched the first one again not too long ago. And you could definitely tell all the signs that the Cabal wanted to believe that there was going to be this big alien invasion because on September 11th, they were going to plan uh, their fake alien invasion. Even in part of the first movie, you see when Jeff Goldblum's holding his laptop and they're running from the White House before it all blows up, there is on his laptop, it says 09111, well, it was 911 basically, and... And I was like, huh, they, they actually uh, had it on the computer. It was like a split second, but you could you could definitely see it. Now, I just sat and enjoyed the movie, even though my other part of my brain was looking for all the uh, cabal insertions in the, in the movie. But uh, I have not seen Resurgence yet. Uh, people have told me it's pretty good, but uh, I do know that the original one, that was their plan for 2001, was to create a fake alien invasion so that we would turn against the, ba- the, the good guys instead of the bad guys. So we would think that uh, uh, there was this alien race that was going to come in and, and conquer, when in fact some of them had already done that, like the Draconian and Arconian forces. But like Tyler's people, for instance, they were trying to um, um, turn people. They still try to do it to turn people against the good guys, like the Pleiadians and, the, and Tyler's people, and, and and the Syrians and any of the good ones that are out there. And well, I remember watching it in 1996, and I wished I had had a chance to watch it before I saw the second one to, as a refresher. And 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 I was I was angry at that time because. Uh, you know, I have long thought that the ETs were basically good and our friends and helpful, and and to have a show where everybody's scared of them and all that crap, I didn't I didn't like that. Uh, I, I'm glad I was kind of innocent to, uh, and not be aware of the Arconian uh, influence. And, and, and haven't you said that 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 humans lost the lost the war and 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 that we were enslaved and and, and for 200 years and then there was a reset and they they brought us back to the to the second uh you know before the war started so we don't remember the war and we don't remember our enslavement 
Yeah, they they, they uh, actually were doing that all in the area I called backstage, and they still continue to do that in some parts of the world. Like uh, I found out recently, uh, Valiant Thor had told me that there are battles being waged on this planet that no one knows anything about. Uh, there are species that actually don't care about humanity, but they are uh, battling each other. And uh, they're just trying to battle over resources. And every now and then people get a glimpse of, of that going on. But uh, there's a lot less of the, the draconian, arconian activity than there was in in the 90s. But a lot of all of that that was going on actually was happening in the backstage, like uh, all the stuff I find with uh, I found with the churches, for instance, where I found out that the draconians, uh, these large uh, draco that looked like demon forms, were actually uh, actually harming people and using churches as like a uh, like a prison. So I, uh, you know, I didn't know realize some of it was still going on until I came across it, but it's significantly less since the 90s. Well, that's that's wonderful. Well, what's the what's the what's the movie? Uh, did it come out after we came back, or did it come out before? You know, do you know what day in 1996 was the the reset? For example, I mean, the first movie came out on July 4th. Was this battle were, were humans captured as in play? Before July Fourth, nineteen ninety-six, or afterwards? Uh, I believe it, it was during. I believe it was towards. It was the the towards. I believe it was. I'm going to see if I can get confirmation of this. Yeah, it's it's the mid to late nineties. It's somewhere in that particular time vicinity. Is that when it was really really bad, and alien abductions were really really bad during that time frame. Uh, but like I said, it's cleared up since then. But yeah, there was a lot of activity between the stage and the backstage in the late nineties. Okay, I, I don't know that it's terribly important this, but but I I, I was curious, and um, and I would and I would recommend to my listeners that they go back and watch the first one and then go to the. Uh, theaters and, and, and watch um, I got to watch it at a drive-in theater at Chris and it was wonderful <laughs> to, to to watch this galactic battle and the stars are right there you know you can look at the constellations and stuff and to watch it at a drive-in was pretty dramatic <laughs> and, and amazing but let's uh, let's uh, ask your galactic friends to, to step, step forward and, and share this evening alrighty I'll see who wants to share first. Hmm. Looks like uh, Abendagoth wants to share first, and then uh, uh, Vlar will step in next. So, let's see here. <clears throat> Welcome, Abendagoth. All right. All right, let's see here. <clears throat> okay, he's coming in slowly for some reason. All right. Okay, Chris is going to be channeling a little bit more like Edgar Cayce did, actually allowing the the ET to to use his uh, his body and vocal cords to share. But he gets to stay awake, and like Edgar Cayce had to sleep while he channeled. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. Okay, here he is. <clears throat> Greetings, everyone. This is Abendagoth of the Garthen Council of Seventeen. The message is that I wish to bring through this evening are this. Earlier in these programs, there was a meeting that took place deep in the Agartha network between several factions of Agarthans. This is the update to that particular meeting. Though I cannot mention everything, just know that the representatives of the Hourglass faction and the representatives of the rest of the Agarthan Council have now come to what you humans call a ceasefire or cease and desist order, which I mean is the representative 
that they chose for the hourglass faction has now entered into the Agarthan Council. So, their seat is now back, and the representatives of what were once called the Saturn faction, which in fact they did not speak for the Council of Saturn at all, they have since been expunged, and they have now joined the rest of Agartha, the same as the Hourglass faction. So these two symbols within Agartha have been disseminated, meaning they no longer exist. They chose to take back their original symbol of the trident, which is the, as you humans would say, national symbol of the Agarthan network, which leaves me with only one outstanding faction, and that is the one you humans know of as the Nazi regime. These, as you would call them, miscreants of history, defied every principle that they were ever taught within the Agarthan network. They have since been quarantined in an area you humans call Yorentia. It is a zone on the other side of the largest barrier on your world. These representatives of Yorentia have come through over the years as prophets and of, as seers and of guides. This, is, this couldn't be further from the truth. There have only been two that this one has seen that have been kind. The rest have been, as you say, prisoners on the other side of a fence, along with several that have escaped to your part, the other parts of your world. They are of Pleiadian and Lemurian descent. These people have an illness, as we consider it to be, but of the mind. This is a faction that have hated humanity since the dawn of, of Atlantis' destruction. This particular faction has disagreed with all ways of trying to integrate them back into the Agarthan network. So just know that when you see a swastika flying on a distant flag or in some part of your history, just know that it's an unfortunate truth that my people left their mark on your world in such a fashion. This is not something that the Council of Agartha has ever approved of nor will ever approve of. I say this to you now because I am giving a warning to all channelers and seers that are in earshot of this program. Please discern by whom you speak to. Please discern because there are beings that look just like we do of, of Syrian and Pleiadian descent and lineage. They came here with the rest of us, so they would look like the rest of us. But they herald messages of hatred, and they hail, herald messages of isolationism and of stupidity. I normally do not tolerate slamming anyone, but this was a warning that came up this evening because of this particular faction's tenacity and mendacity, as you would say, in recent days. Though the Draco still pose a minor threat, and so do some of the Arconian forces, they're nothing compared to this faction. This faction will pose as guides attempting to give messages of free energy, giving messages of scientific advancements, giving messages of spiritual advancements, and they will all mean it, but in the respect that they wish people to free them from their prison. They want humanity to evolve technologically to a particular hum, as it were. So once that hum is reached, the prison wall would drop. But this does not mean that anything to do with free energy is bad. Quite the opposite. We are just saying to any seers embarking on any venture involving spirituality and the sciences alike, but this particular faction knows it's on its way out. They are the ones that control the cabal. So they themselves realize they are on their way out, and some of them have already surrendered back to us and have agreed to, as you humans say, be deprogrammed with compassion and love. This is what we wanted all along. 
but a minority that still, as you say, lurks about in the shadows is still there. So, I say again to all that we are within earshot, the Council of Seventeen Agarthans watch over you from below. This may sound unusual, but in this particular instance, this is very true. These rogue draconians that are still around terrorizing people in the place you know of as the backstage is also coming to a close. The one, the overlords that control these beasts of burden, as it were, are several members of this rogue Nazi faction. They are also, they also have some of their origins in Orion, the Pleiades, and Sirius. This is not something that we wished to say lightly, but in this particular instance, I had to bring this up. So, I will also end on a much happier note than this. In the skies, your, as you say, eastern skies, watch the the clouds and watch the skies transform. Because in the instance of this, the reason I say eastern is the fact that all of the prayers that have ever been heard in regards to the sky, such as chem trailing, such as the writings in the sky that denote certain markings and certain paths of nefariousness, are, as I can say officially, at their end. It began in the east and went to the west. It went opposite of your planetary rotation so that we could cancel out anything nefarious in not only the safe zones around your world, but in every other corner of your world, the chemtrails have lessened. I know this is little consolation to anyone who has suffered from this, though we have said do not pay attention to this because it would make it worse. You have indeed listened, and your good manifestations have been rewarded thusly. This is the message I came to bring this evening. My name is Abendigoth, and I offer but blessings and light to the whole of humanity. Thank you. Oh, Abendigoth, this is just wonderful. This is exciting. The, the, this uh, great news, and and and, and that the chemtrails are are disappearing, and and that the work that that we have done here on the Diamond Network. Uh, has has added to this, and and I just marvel. I just I've just been loving the clouds. They look so natural and and real. Uh, I and, and and the regular camp trails seem to be gone. It seems to me that they're doing a lot of weather control. That there are strange planes and different things happening for weather control. I'm wondering if winter would already be here. If they hadn't been doing this uh, flying around and weather control thing, can can a uh, uh, Bendigoff stay and, and answer a question like that? Of, of course, I'll see. It. Okay, okay, here he is. <clears throat> of course, dear Candy. But remember, in times past, a lot of the equipment you know of as harp has been disabled. What you are seeing of are the remnants of the cabal in different places using equipment that was separate from the main harp grids. Like in Australia, it was separate from the main harp grids. In parts of Russia, parts of Europe, and parts of Africa, there were separate grids of harp. But this is their last-ditch effort to try to control the uncontrollable because the being you call the Earth Mother is now fighting back with a vengeance, but not in a violent way, pushing back only slightly. She was able to countermand this particular technology. It was actually that rogue uh, Nazi faction that actually controlled some of this network. But the one that is in Russia is now under the control of the man you call and know as Putin. He is actually helping to disassemble this particular unit 
so that as one you do not have to worry about any longer. He is, as you say, not from this world, so he is aiding and abetting, as it were, the good forces to help shut down some of these. Now, this is not to say that there aren't independent towers in places. What you all disabled on these shows in times past were the major, larger portions of the HARP network. The reason there are still some little, as you say, rogue portions of this network is that they had backup batteries in place. The resistance can no longer get to these spots. So, it is up to the people to send positive thoughts. Not to say that the plots that have not been sent so far have not worked, because they have. Evidences of, of this is the chemtrails disappearing. This weather control that is left is nowhere near as powerful as it was, say, back in your 1990s. That is when it was at its pinnacle because of the fact of the Arconian and Draconian forces that invaded the backstage. But I digress. This particular technology is, as you say, at its wit's end. Now, there is another portion to the technology that you see every day when you drive down your streets and you walk your dogs or you take a walk in the park. These are the towers that you use for your cell phones, for your cable and Wi-Fi. Atop each one of these towers is an invisible silicon pyramid. These silicon pyramids were revealed to this one long ago when he was at the Lincoln, Nebraska location. He saw what he was never meant to see from the standpoint of the cabal. Though we would not let him record this incident, these particular workers that were installing these silicon pyramids were all cabal, every single one of them. But I digress once again. These particular pyramids, though they generate something bad, are being infiltrated, even as we speak, by what you call the God Force. Others have called it by many other names, such as the Everything Energy, Ultimaton, and many other names. But this particular energy is inhabiting these particular pyramids, taking it back over and taking over what the Cabal thought they had the right to harness. This energy is making the Cabal workers think that everything is in perfect working order, when in fact it is only a half-truth. We, along with the Venusian people and many others, like the Pleiadian Collective, are currently allowing them to think that their grids are still in control, when in fact they have not been for quite some time, nor have they ever truly been, if one is to think about it. We are merely leveling the playing field and slowly integrating all of this knowledge into mankind. This is not a quick fix, nor is this something that happens overnight. But in retrospect to what has occurred on your planet thus far in history up to this point, you can honestly say that you are on the cusp of the golden age of mankind. Thank you. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I, I'm going to have an opportunity to speak live uh, about our topics on our show soon uh, to a network that, that has been looking for global transformation. And and I have uh, I have uh, quoted practically the same thing in in my my presentation that, that we are uh, on the cusp of, of something wonderful. When I look at the clouds, I smile. I feel good about the clouds, but they they seem to be kind of low, closer to the ground, and there's there's they seem to be just they do not seem to be like clouds from 25, 30 years ago and more. Uh, and I'm wondering if if a lot of them are cloaking devices for the ETs. Uh, I, I just don't feel like the clouds are are as they were before chemtrails. Comment? Yes, Dukandi, you are correct in that observation. These clouds are indeed different, though there are species such as the Anakim Accord 
ones you call Sasquatch, that use vessels that look very much like clouds. And yes, you yourself have seen them on many occasions and not realized it. The real clouds that your planet is supposed to have look totally different than the ones you're used to because the ones that are you, you are used to have been manipulated so long as that it became the norm. This is something we have tried to change. The clouds you are seeing now are actually a mixture of your blue skies mixed with the rest of the super planet C as these zone barriers are dropping. Now there are only seven of them left. So the skies that inhabited all of these other zones that were of different colors, makeups, and types, and all other clouds therein have begun to merge with your clouds in your skies. This is why the clouds look totally different. This is why the sky looks a little bluer. This is also attributed to the advent of fifth density. This uh, you will continue to see until the zone barriers all melt away and the stars, even the, even the stars themselves, will look different to your eyes. Thank you. Yes, it, it seems that the, the constellations are in different places than what I'm used to in the northern hemisphere. I have never traveled to Australia or any place in the southern hemisphere, but uh, uh, any any comment more so on uh, on the changes with the, the constellations and and, and the moon. I, as I understand it, the moon is supposed to rise opposite from the sun, but the moon is appearing at ninety degree angles from the sun often in the evening sky. Yes. This is correct. You are not only witnessing what you know of as the Mandela effect, but you are witnessing the moon changing its apogee and perigee because of the fact that it is an artificial construct and is attempting to change your, as you say, poles. But since you exist in the positive timeline, you are only seeing the changing of the skies. Now, as for the stars themselves, you are seeing reflections and remnants of old times. This has always been a well-known fact within your sciences, that you are always seeing what happened in the ancient past. This will actually change when the Earth and the rest of the universe all sync up, as you say, and the place you call the backstage is the norm for everyone once again, as it is supposed to be, because it is synced up to the rest of reality. So... When this happens, just know that all the stars that you see will look totally different. You may even see purple and white and golden nebulas that you never expected. You may even see extra planets in the sky that you never expected, both of artificial construct and natural construct. These particular instances are occurring because these zone barriers are dropping. People are noticing in dreams, visions, and the like that they may be having dreams of the sky changing and the sky even looking like it's being set aflame with purple, golden, yellow, and blue. This is going to happen when all the colors of all the other zones clash, and the final color that the Earth will eventually be will be a magenta purple. This one has seen this Earth, but in that interim where the skies are changing in the super-Earth, there will be a marbleization effect, as you humans would say, while the energy of the Earth decides which color it is actually going to be, the Earth might actually go through many shifts of colors over the next few centuries. But just know that it eventually ends up at a magenta purple color because there are parts of your super-Earth that are already this color, and it seems that those particles in the air are the dominant effect, but they take many centuries to coalesce. This does not mean it will take many, many centuries for you all to know the truth. You are already beginning to know the truth. But in this instance, I must say that what you call full disclosure will not be as fast as you would like it, though at some point your government will have no choice but to reveal that there have been aliens here all along. This does not mean that the Agarthan Council will automatically come to the surface and greet everyone. We still will watch and wait to see how everyone handles this transition. This I mean, is a transition in its truest sense. 
There is not going to be this huge event, as people say, but the event itself is on an energetic level where people will feel different. They will know more of their soul's truth and in time stand next to us as brothers and as sisters in the sun. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. And I appreciate Chris Jacobs helping with sharing this, this information uh, that Vandegolf has given to mediums and others. Uh, on Monday night, Chris said that we should be looking for a, a special kind of meteor shower coming next Tuesday or, or Wednesday on some part of the planet, but he didn't know what part would get to see it. And I was wondering if you could share some more information about this uh, unique uh, meteor shower and, and will any of these meteors knock out any satellites and, and what continent might people see, see it? This is an interesting question because what has been flying overhead are not mere meteors. They're pieces of, as you say, antiquated technology mixed with pieces of louche collectors that have been destroyed in orbit along with some alien craft that were unmanned and have burnt up in your atmosphere. The Russian meteor that crashed into the Earth was one such meteor. It was made of a different kind of metal that people would have noticed very quickly, but the cabal forces came in and suppressed that information. But what I'm about to say will be most shocking. These meteor showers that you always see are that constant where there are technologies in your orbit that are burning up and causing these pretty and beautiful showers that you are so used to. Now, where this will be most visible is an interesting conundrum because it should be visible everywhere. But this next one, that this one aforementioned, should be visible over your parts of your continental United States in and around the areas you call the lower states and to your middle ones like your state of Texas. This will be where it is going to be the brightest, but where it will be visible is to the east to around where you are, dear Candy, and over to the other southern states, like the Carolinas and to your state of Florida. Those will be the, the areas where it will be shown the best. Now, it's not to say that people anywhere else won't see something like a shooting star, but where it will be the brightest will be in those areas of your country. Thank you. Well, it's been great that... that the Galactics and Chris has been able to share this information with us. Are the scientists expecting this, or, or is this going to be a surprise to the scientists, this particular meteor shower? This will be, as you say, a complete and total surprise to them because they were not expecting this particular event. They are always told by their superiors when something is going to occur because the Cabal has actually destroyed something and sent it down into the atmosphere. In this instance, it is not the cabal that has done it. It is all the other good ETs, as you say, that are out there getting rid of these negative automated units that surround your world. This is why they were not expecting it. Now, if they get wind of it soon enough, they may try to report on it and say that it is some sort of meteor shower or set of shooting stars. But just know, even if that does happen, know what it truly, truly was. Thank you. In the past, our group here has has uh, shared our energy to to heal and direct something. Uh, would would you would you like us to do that in in regards to the loose collectors or 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 something along these lines? Do you, do you need our uh, our uh, help and request for more aid? In this instance, that is always a good thing, but I can assure you now that most of what you consider the loose collectors have already been destroyed and have burned up in your atmosphere. 
also your satellite system around your planet is not what it seems to be. If anyone flew up to one of these of these satellites, they would just see a satellite with the solar panels extended. But in actuality, it is one of these louche collectors. So in this instance, yes, prayers from below would help greatly. But just know we have that portion well in hand. So any energy that you can send to our forces in space would be most helpful. Wonderful. Uh, Sunny and everyone on, on the call here, why don't we take a moment to expand the law of one that we affirmed earlier and 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 uh share our energies, our good thoughts, uh our prayers for hope and and, and, and healing, uh and, and and just expand the law of one to to the Vendigoth forces and, and their partners in in uh resolving the the loose issues. And, and Chris, would you would you like to add to that? Yes, let's see. Uh, they're showing me only little like uh, snippets of images, but I'm seeing uh, Earth orbit where some of these things that are left they look like they're unchained from things like the like they were unhinged from another source, and they are they're falling to Earth in other areas, like they're being particleized and showering down in different areas. So I'm seeing these, seeing like a white beam going out from the planet, almost like a feathery, like, smoke, and lighting up all of these locations. And those are the images that they are showing me at the moment, that it's not just us tonight that is doing this. But it's other people around the planet that are doing this. And I see those beams coming from those people and hitting these. Uh, they look almost like saucer-shaped louche collectors. They look almost like um, like a strange lamp. And they're black in color, and they are being broken up. And it looks like as they're breaking up, they look like they're turning to rock. So people, if they would find a piece of one of these, would think that it is uh, iron ore, like a meteorite. But it is actually a piece of one of these these crafts. So I can I can honestly say with as much debris as I am seeing here uh, that is coming down, people will be finding pieces of these for quite some time. They'll think they're meteor rocks, but they're not. Wow. And I just feel so much energy. Uh, going up through my fingerprint fingertips as I'm, it's just uh, pointing to to the heavens and and all this energy and, and this this is great. I, I hope all of those listening are are, uh, are sending their light energy for this this great healing work. Abednegoff shared so many things in his his message, and it it's ex- exciting. For the update, in that there's um, that all the groups are now in unison, except for the Nazi group, and 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 we are fast working on um, either neutralizing them or getting them to turn uh, and repent from their ways. Uh, some days the, the sky it just looks like a shimmering turquoise. It's just been amazing to me. Of course, I've been on this ma- massive road trip all across the USA, and to see what what is happening in in the sky has just been uh, uh, amazing to me. Um, does anyone else want to do a star six and ask a, a question at this point? of Abendagoff. We have another guest that is, is waiting, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Uh, Abendagoff, thank you so much for sharing and, and thank you for your responses to my questions. He uh, he is now bowing and he's he's stepping back here. 
So I do have a question. Oh, okay. Yeah, he can he can come back in. If it's yeah. okay, it's about uh, the Yellowstone. I read an article. I think it was on Rumor Mill News today that they're closing, getting everybody out of there. They're forbidding anyone to come in. The roads are buckling. They're expecting a really big uh, eruption. And so Mary and I did the Law of One. Marianne did. I'd just like to know, uh, you know, what his ideas are about that, what he feels. Okay. That's the question yeah. about Yellowstone. Mm-hmm. Yes, this is a very interesting concept. But in this interim, I must say that the reports you have been told are, as you humans call them, to be a false flag. Yes, there was originally a threat behind this volcanic eruption long ago, but long before anyone ever settled this continent. This was a story that perpetuated later because the cabal found out that there was a volcano underneath. So they they put, as you say, one of the stranglet bombs underneath in order to cancel out the landmass so that eruption would cause what you humans know of as the three days of darkness. But... In this particular instance, I can honestly say your thoughts, along with the thoughts of many thousands of people, of manifesting differently and correctly, have averted this particular disaster from ever taking place. Thank you. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. So are you saying we have completely avoided all causes of three days of darkness? Yes, that is correct. Excellent, excellent. Of course, it's reported that John of Patmos uh, predicted this over 2,000 years ago, and so uh, this is wonderful that this uh, no longer needs to be of concern. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for your question, Cynthia. It, did mm-hmm. someone else have a question of, uh, at this point? Uh, yes, this is Sunny. And when I've heard you talk about the moon being artificial, I think about how the moon has always been considered a sacred uh, feminine energy, and it's, you know, it, it's you know, this, you know, that this all relates to. I guess, as you say, in the past it was wasn't artificial, but it it still feels like there's a special energy coming from the moon, you know, when it's full and all of that. And in everything you've told us about what's going on in the moon and all these spaces and everything, in it being artificial, it could tend to, in a certain sense, negate those feelings. But uh, I just. I guess I'm asking in relative to the um, astrological and energetic significance of the the sun and the moon. And, you know, the other night I looked out and it was just absolutely gorgeous and he was talking about the the sky changing and all. The clouds were just like a magical fabric in the east as the the moon was rising there. And I I wanted to take a picture of it, but it didn't quite work out with my camera. So excellent question, Sunny. And yeah. and I want to know, has it always been artificial or, or has it just become artificial in more recent times? Hmm. These are very interesting questions. And I mm-hmm. will speak to the first portion of the question. The first portion of the question is, yes, there is a special energy about the moon. It was not always originally a an artificial construct. It did have life on it once that held a special reverence and still does within the density you call the twelfth density. There is a moon there with an atmosphere and the like. This has been mentioned aforementioned before, but in this instance I will say that the energy frequency that people feel coming from the moon, the real moon frequency, it is indeed a special, as you say, spiritual frequency. The negative portions have always been the Arconian binary network, but the special frequencies that people have felt for centuries come from different points in your histories, 
including your future, to the future that the Council of Saturn exists in. This is the special energy that people are feeling because the moon has been restored to its original self, even though there is still technology on it in that century, and there is still a base there. People live there and can live on the surface because there is air. But in this particular instance, the moon in that century is no longer in Earth orbit, but it is on the outer reaches of your system. They did this because it is in its purpose right here in this century to keep your planet intact. This is a healing that is going on by the Council of Saturn from the year 300,000. They are using the template of their version of the moonship, as some have called it, to aim it like a lens to its past counterpart in your current time continuum and century. They are using it very much like a reverse telescope or a laser to be able to hone a beam to certain parts of your world, though your cabal forces do not know as such. They themselves will eventually feel this pulsing of this energy in time. Now the differences in sun and moon, though your system is an artificial construct in this century, are this. The astrology involved is indeed legit, as dear Trelindus said on the calls in the past. But in your current time continuum, it is merely being reflected from a different time continuum. This particular energy, look you can look for this and discern for this for yourselves by looking up at the moon and seeing past the negative technological eyes that are watching you from the moonship and see its true essence as it's supposed to be. This will eventually restore it to its natural self in the future time continuum. But I'm not saying exist in a future time continuum. See those energies as existing now and beaming down onto your planet in reverence versus always focusing on the binary network that the Nazi faction is always using. Thank you. Well, thank you. Can I comment? That was wonderful. Yeah, that can, was... I, can I comment? Mm-hmm. I just want to add, too, maybe you can shine a little bit more light on there. The other... You're the galactivizing historian. He is. And I'm talking to the galactic being that's in you, Chris. Uh, but the other galact, you're the galactivizing historian, and Andrew Bart is galactic historian. He said that there's several moons, and they're, they're, they're like a technology, and there's several moons, and they were put out on the edges of the universe to measure universes growing and expanding, anything on that. And that's a beautiful thing. It's like a measurement thing they use it for. Yes, this is actually indeed 100% factual what the uh, what the dear Andrew Barthes did say. This is something that we aided in helping. We used our own spheroid, as this one says, technology to measure the ever-expanding universe and beyond. We have sent probes into other universes as well to uh, explore we are explorers at heart, very much like your past explorers took to the seas and looked to the skies for directions. This is how we see the universe, and we wish humans to see the vastness and the beauty that we have witnessed. This is why we always say, do not focus on the negative. Focus on what is currently possible and not what you wish to have changed. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, I think we have another guest I'd like to speak uh, for the first time on a Diamond Network. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. In fact, I just ran into this uh, particular galactic tonight. So Welcome. Uh, let's see. Okay, Bendigoth is waving at everybody, and he's he's back, stepping back now. Thank you. Um, let me see. This man, is he is a... Now, he would look like a big Viking warrior, very much like Michael. And he is he's pretty tall, I'd have to say. He's 8 to 10 feet tall. And we would call them Nephilim, you know, very much like how Vlar Smart was in the in the past on here. This guy's name is this guy's name is Vlar. Uh so I'm going to see what he wants to say tonight. He's in a giddy mood. 
Um, Welcome to the live. So the candy see. shop show. Okay, let's see what he has to say. And ah, my name is Flar, as this one has just said. I am what uh, you would call a Viking warrior or Nephilim or giant. Others have been on this show in the past, but I must just speak about a particular useful tool that is available to all humans, no matter where they are on planet Earth. Now, it is, the idea of, of protection has been brought up. Yes, it is very important that you exist in a state of knowing that you are always and indeed be protected. However, you do not necessarily need to be prideful or egocentric in that particular belief. You are as you are. You have an infinite core and an infinite, an infinite number of protective barriers, including the light and, the, as this one says, the charcoal layer. But in certain instances where you encounter your day-to-day -day or, as you say, daily grind, this is where my people come in. We are, as you would say, a police force or fire department, as this one would put it. When one calls out to us, as what happened to a particular fair maiden this evening, of whom I will not mention on the show, but there is one that called out to us, and we arrived to take care of something that could not be taken care of otherwise. This is what we do. Say, for example, you have a fire department and you have a room full of firefighters that are just, as you humans say, shooting the breeze. Then the alarm goes off and they have to go to do their work. Think of a thought of helplessness or sad thought or cry for help as that alarm. We get up and we go investigate. These fire stations, as I will use as an example, are situated in many, many parts of your world, including your United States. We have three such locations near your location, dear Elizabeth, and your location, dear Candy, plus in your state of California, dear Sunny, there are at least four locations near your general vicinity. These particular, as I will call them, fire stations were designed to get rid of some of the most ornery and most devious of, as you say, bad guys or antagonists. This is not something we take lightly. We notice a cry for help, and we do come but there are times where it is someone's lesson to experience something, so we are ordered to stand fast. But in most instances, we can come in if the timing is right. The one that I rescued this evening and stand next to her this evening was in need of help because of the fact that four of your worst kind of draconian operatives were close at hand to make the mood less than jubilant. This was actually an understatement, but I digress. As I speak to you now, I stand with her there. So, in this particular instance, I can talk and speak about my fellow brethren. Think of a time where you have called out to your 911 and have indeed gotten a hold of your law enforcement or fire department or medical personnel. This is no different. However, we work on thought and we work on, as you say, being jubilant and merry, very much like your Viking tales of old. The fair maiden that I rescued this evening will be spoken about in tales told for centuries to come. This is something that I wish to say to make her mood more jubilant. So, I brought this through on this show this evening. However, this should make the moods of many more jubilant, knowing that there are songs sung and tales told that have been regaled about for many centuries, 
on such quests and adventures. Any tales you've heard about my people, or we sing about songs, sing songs about battles won, and about protection, and about the, as you would say, a conquest of a fair and busty maiden. This should make people laugh at these concepts. But there are truthfulness to these particular words. I say this this evening, not only to be serious, but to be in joy and in laughter. These are the moods that humans are supposed to be in, balanced. There are moods at times where that sway you, such as being angry at a particular issue. This is not unnatural, just like being happy is not unnatural. But a more jubilant mood is how humans were in before the oppression started. In the times before the darkness befell your Egyptian culture and before Atlantis sank beneath the waves and moved to the area you know of as Antarctica, there was a jubilance in the air that has never been matched since. This is a magic we wish to restore to this world. So, in that interim between now and then, please visualize this jubilance and this very, very positive nature in the here and now so that magic is truly restored to this world as it was in the times of yore, as you would say. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. So we've been uh, part of this protecting of this uh, damsel in distress, and there's, there's going to be a story is told about what happened this evening with the Viking Savior. Oh. Well, does, uh, does anyone have a question of our, of our Viking uh, this evening? It's uh, it's something uh, about the, these uh, these happy, joyful, strong, self confident uh, uh, Vikings. Mhm. Yeah, he's nothing but in a joyful mood. You know, he's uh, he's actually smiling the whole time that I can see him. And I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So. Uh, I just lost my question. Okay, so jubilant and happy. Let so I guess we're on a mission, and we can do this. You know, it's naturally helping. But for those who are already awake and on that mission and uh, dedicated to it, what can we do? Us, stay at home to help us to help us through this. Not through it, because we are going through it, just to, uh, <laughs> I guess those who don't have patience, to help hurry it up. <laughs> you know what I mean. It was just a jubilant joke, but uh, it's a question. W- w- what's the most important thing for us in this next month or two in our, that we can work on emotionally, I guess, because I'll use emotions because uh, that's a, an important part of us. Of course, this is an interesting and most joyful of questions. Now, what you are saying in the next couple of months, this is a concept that I must insist upon. In the now is when you bring it. Then, when the now is in the next couple of months, the bringing of this jubilant attitude will have remained thusly. So, in this particular interim from this to that, like I said, in the present moment, bring the patience bring the song and bring the jubilance to this present moment. Therefore, the light light and the shadow, or what you call the yin and the yang within you, is always balanced. There is a misconception on how to keep this balanced. People think they must add one and then they add the other energies in order to do this. This is incorrect. Staying in a balanced attitude such as knowing when to fight for something, in a nonviolent manner, that is, and knowing when to be happy and jubilant 
automatically harmonizes this yin and this yang. The concept you know of as love and friendship and the like keeps this yin and this yang positively balanced. Though, as I've said before, there are causes worth fighting over. The era for the violent skirmishes and the battles won in such a manner, even though I am a Viking origin and have fought in battles thusly, is at its end. But this does not mean that your eternal vigil should dissipate. Your vigil in this retrospective look back should always be this jubilant attitude. Therefore, you have a shield made of light and a sword made of shadow. This does not mean you become complacent, but this also does not mean that you always see an enemy over your hillside. This is a balance that your forebears understood. So, therefore, the descendants that live in this century must do the same. Yes, this happy and joyful attitude is most perfect, but you would not allow yourself to be, say, killed or mugged. So, in this sense, you must have both balance. We are not saying, as I've said before, expecting the, the proverbial boogeyman to come around every corner. Keep that fear aside and shoved away from you after you have dealt with it thusly. But keep it balanced and keep your balanced energy as an eternal vigil against the night and in favor of balance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth, for the Thank question. You. Yes. <sighs> okay. Now he is uh, he's taking a step back now. So okay. that's what he came to say. Wonderful. Wonderful. We'll come again someday. Hey, Chris. Well, that, hmm? you, know, you, you I have never heard you sing a song that the Galactic sings when he's in you. Let's want to do it? Uh, I think I'll pass on that tonight, even oh, though he was going on. to do that. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> mm-hmm. Come on, Chris. <laughs> Let's do it. That, that would be an adventure, Chris. <laughs> <sighs> no, I, I will save the ears of everyone on this call, so that one I will have to decline. <laughs> oh, I often sing the Johnny Appleseed song when uh I'm doing my earthing and 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 uh sometimes a blessing around the table, especially when there's a child, you know, I just love to sing. What is that? I've never heard of that. But the Lord is good to me. And so I thank the Lord for the sun and the rain and the apple tree. The Lord is good to me. Aw, I like it. <laughs> the Johnny Appleseed song. Thank you, Isla. Thank you. Well, I'm ju- jubilant after Chris's healing Monday. Chris, an hour after you worked on my shoulder, uh, it, the pain went away and it stayed away, and that's just been fabulous. My my hand is is less uh, uh, painful. There's not the sharp jabs you were saying there about the tendons that's been hurt. I I don't know if I should wrap it or or if you can send any more light energy. And 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 can I can I expect? You know I'm doing this Sundays, and can I real can have there been instances? Uh, where you've been able to heal uh, degeneration in eyes or or clear up cataracts? I have never had, had the opportunity to do it. I uh, some people said they've had they've had issues with their eyes, but it's usually just like blurriness or something because it was caused by an attachment and then it came back again. But there are just some conditions that I haven't been able to uh, completely reverse. Sometimes it's the person's lesson that they're supposed to go through. Uh, you know, uh, in that in that uh, respect, then the guides won't allow it. But I've never been really able to heal cataracts. I can send light to to them, but uh, beyond that, and tell the cells to heal them. But beyond that, if it's not supposed to be, it won't happen. Right. 
Well, it's it's been uh, very stressful for me, and and I think there's one or two others that would like a little bit of a healing tonight. But could mm-hmm. you send any more healing light to my my eyes? My cataracts are bad in in both eyes. Mhm. Yes, I can I can do that. I'm actually doing. I was doing that the whole time you were talking about it. So. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm doing that. I can see your core around the, your energy core around your eyes. It seems all right. Uh, there's nothing interfering. I don't see any attachments. Don't see any implants. Don't see anything like that uh, that could be doing this. Uh, so I'm sending them right to the, the the center of the eye where the ca- the cataracts are, and ask that to be healed. And I'm asking these guys here that are with me to aid in this. And I'm asking your guide, Raul Tendar, to aid in this, too. Wonderful. I accept his healing. Yeah, they're giving the thumbs up, so you'll more than likely be hearing from them fairly soon. <clears throat> Great. Great. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, Did anybody have any questions? Who has never uh, had a healing of any kind from Chris who would like to have one this evening? Um, Do a star six. Yes, hello. Yeah, it's Sunny. Um, I was just wondering if you had a chance to take a look at what's going on in my belly. At the, you know, I know I've asked you about these things in the past, but mm-hmm. it's, um, you know, there's just there's a real feeling of a blockage in the center. You know, right ab- right above my navel and a mm-hmm. distent distension there, and it always feels full and. Uh, and it just feels like you know it feels like it's more than just on the physical level, but it indeed it is on the physical level as well. But you know okay. I, I feel this most all the time. So okay. yeah, I'm seeing a dark spot in the center where you were talking about it, mm-hmm. and I'm looking deeper. Okay, yeah, it looks like you you encountered some nanites recently. So nanites. I'm going to. Yeah, they can come through in water. So, um, let me see. I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'll ask uh, Michael and Vlar and them to, to and Bendigoth and them to remove it. Yeah, this could have come in through tap water. This could have come in through rain. So, I'm um, going to... Um, Okay, this is going to sound like a weird question, but has there been any fracking in your area recently? Um, not right in my area that I know of, but I know that it goes on in California. Okay. Because uh, yeah. as I found out, some of the origins of some of these are from that. So um, mm. they're they're released from the granite. Because see, some of the harvester nanites helped in the destruction of Maldek. They came down with the meteorites and got fused into the granite and everything. So, um, let me see. I'm going to, yeah, okay, Michael is extracting these. Mm. And there is somebody else near you that's in a helmet. I'm going to see who this is. And get rid of you. You don't look very friendly. Okay. Okay. And, okay, I'm asking all the others to go in there and deal with who this is. It looks like you had some kind of insect person near you. So, uh, um, yeah, they're they're helping your your core uh, light back up again. They're extracting the uh, junk, and it's being encapsulated and taken away. Uh, so let's see if there's anything else in there. Hmm. Still seeing a bit of a spot. I'm going to shine a light in there. And okay. Oh yeah, it hadn't got all of it yet. It's been there okay. for quite a while. Yeah. Okay. How long has that that 
that spot been there? Well, I, it's been since before the surgeries. I've, okay. I've noticed the tightness in there, so maybe a year or so before that. Okay, that may have been from that, but there was something else there that was continuing to make you your mm-hmm. your bowels upset. But also, um, it had to do with the, cha- the changing energies too. We'll do that. Oh, since yeah. The, Mm-hmm. Uh, no, they, that's usually the last part of a person to become acclimated. But uh, but it looks like they are extracting that black spot. Uh, oh. So uh, from what I can see. Mm, well, that's, that's wonderful. I hope so. <laughs> you, thank you all. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm sending light through the whole core just to make sure there's nothing else there. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and it looks like. Looks like you are are good now. They brightened your core to where it's a lot br- lot whiter. Hmm. Hmm. Well, okay, thanks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it looks like you're fine now. Uh, even uh, I don't know if you'll feel an immediate change or not, mm-hmm. but at least whatever was there causing damage is uh, is gone. Well, I, I don't feel it right away, but I will certainly be observant. I just came in from outside, okay. uh, walking, feeding my kitty. But do, oh. do, I do thank you and, and all the everyone who's been a part of this. Appreciate it mm-hmm. very much. Yeah, thank you, Sonny. Yes. We appreciate you. Oh, <laughs> well, I appreciate everybody. <laughs> You know, a great family. We're all linked, even though we're many miles apart. <laughs> Love mm-hmm. you, Sonny. You're going to make it through, girl. <laughs> oh, I, be- I believe so, yeah. <laughs> we're getting ready. Star, uh, for the big star. disclosure. Did, mm-hmm. uh, Chris, uh, do you think that we're still on track for uh, this full disclosure uh, December 21st? 2017. I was told those timelines are pliable. I was told something would occur then. You know, somebody will make some sort of announcement, or some, there would be some big change. But Valiant Thor has stressed to me that people are not ready for complete disclosure, but there will be something taking place, either on an energetic level or on a uh, on a, an earthly level. On that date, like something of that, something of importance, like aliens or something of the like, will be, will be revealed. Is what what he told me. I asked him if that was still firm. He said only if enough changers came forward and helped change the energy. Well, so, I saw an uptick pattern, an uptick pattern in disclosure regarding galactics, mm-hmm. uh, kind of like I would call it the Mandela effect, but not really. It's been like the video uh, Heather sent you the video of the. Uh, E.T. talking, being interviewed uh, Mm -hmm. back in Roswell. It seemed real to me. So I thought about that more today, and I thought, wow, there's surely more videos, whether that's brand new or it's been around, or somebody released it finally, like the man who interviewed him a long time ago or whatever. There's more Mm -hmm. videos coming out. And so to listen and watch a true alien get an interview, (laughs) get interviewed, is even an uptick in um, getting to know more. So to me, that's a disclosure. So I'm looking for more of that. What do you think, mm-hmm. guys? Oh yeah, uh, I believe there's going to be more of that uh, to come. Uh, you're going to see more and more of that slowly coming out. Even though I'm not always a fan of things, you know, being let out slow. I know it's necessary. You know, I would much rather see on the television. Uh, people coming, uh, you know, coming out and saying, "Yes, we we're from the Pleiades. Yes, we're from Mars. Yes, we're from Venus, and that we've been here for centuries." I would love to see that, uh, but I know that in certain respects, that certain things have to change first before they will ever do that. And the ETs have shared with us through you, Chris, a while back that they're not going to go through the government. They're going to use the people mm-hmm. all around the world. And so, disclosure, but since we're in a paradigm shift and a transition, what we know, what we picture when we all say disclosure, you know, that disclosure may come out in a 
different, completely different way, happy way than we found. And the, the people, you know, you say disclosure, you just you you picture people up on a podium talking or whatever with mm-hmm. people and having conferences, but it may come out in a completely different, creative, fun way because that's part of the transition paradigm shifting. Anyway. <laughs> hmm. Oh yes, I I agree completely. I might interject a moment here to remind our listeners, if you have any questions or comments, follow up. Um, My email is keytotruth at yahoo.com. And next week we uh, are going to be blessed by a a return visit from Chris's mom. So look forward to the Candy Shop Show next next week uh, when she brings her mediumship skills Mm -hmm. to the show. Uh, Chris, did you want to uh, to give out a contact? Oh yeah, for myself, yes. That's uh, my uh, my email is Christopher Stephen Jacobs. That's Stephen with a ph at gmail dot com. My Facebook is Christopher dot s dot Jacobs, and my website is Christopher Stephen with the number eight afterwards dot wix dot com slash watcher speak. That's the words watcher and speak put together. That's great. I'm uh, getting involved in, an, in in yet another project. I, I have put a profile up at the website uh in worldwide organic farmers uh USA dot org and and so that would be W W O O F hyphen USA dot org. And so uh um the name of my farm is Ozark Dawn. If anyone would like to to look at pictures of what we're doing here at our little spiritual retreat and, and, and the ad that we've asked uh, uh about uh, please set that out. On another topic before we go Chris, you you do these wonderful readings and and you help people with emotional and physical issues. Uh, I'm thinking about my four uh, 30-something children. You know, that generation is so uh, caught up in the grind. Uh, And and I, I try to model how if you're, you know, if you're living right, you're working on increasing your frequencies that the things can fall in place for one easier is it, I've talked to you before about my two sons and my two daughters mm-hmm. is there anything we can do to help their daily grind be less stressful I uh I would say don't get so sucked up in it I used to be the exact same way when I worked for uh, places like Walmart and Kmart and all of that. Uh, and no, I don't want any angry emails from the Walmart and Kmart crowd, so I'm not slandering anybody. But um, but uh, this uh, the, uh, I used to work for Walmart when I lived in Tempe, Arizona. And, well, I'll go into this a little bit, and this would actually help, because I've seen this actually take place and people become more jubilant even in, in the midst of the grind. So I promised somebody that I would tell this story because she found it very funny. So this is what happened to me when I worked there, when I absolutely hated the place. I was sucked into it uh, beyond belief. And I was sitting, I, I actually I came into the lunchroom uh, or the, the, the employee break room and uh, I came to see this very large cake that was sitting on one of the tables, and it wasn't wrapped up. The box was on a different uh, counter, and uh, it was just sitting. So I just went and grabbed a piece of it and went and sat down. I didn't have money for lunch or anything, and other people came in and saw me eating it. Well, they automatically went and started eating it. Well, when there was this manager in a suit that came walking in and saw everybody eating on this gigantic cake, and he just went ballistic. 
Well, he just said, oh, no, no, you're not supposed to do that. That wasn't for you. And everybody just kind of laughed and ignored him. Well, uh, it was like this kind of more of a jubilance in the in the air at that point. And others started to come in, you know, and I told them, well, if you didn't want it in here, you shouldn't put it in there, you know. And we were just laughing and we were just kind of ignoring them laughing. And they came in, and over the next couple of days, they were even questioning people, saying, "Oh, that was like a five hundred dollar cake. You you need to pay us back, and all this stuff, other stuff." And we just kept laughing. We didn't pay attention to their drama. And the more we laughed, the more they got grumpy. But in time, it just went away. Nothing ever came of it. So, in this particular instance, I would say to them and anybody else in the grind, day to day grind. Find one of those situations like where your bosses are being stubborn like that or following a stupid rule book, you know, doing this and that that seems pointless, going against what what would be common sense. And uh, where it seems like they're almost like they're setting the stage or setting you up for a fall, which that does happen from time to time. Just find one of those situations to not take it seriously and just go about the day in that joyful attitude like what we exhibited that day at Walmart. And then eventually you'll see that energy or that, how can I put it, that sit, the situation that you're supposed to be in, in outside that grind will present itself to you in some fashion. But you have to actually not be so sucked into it that you can't see the forest for the trees or you cannot see what's around you. You cannot feel anything anymore. You just become kind of a drone. And that is the one of the worst places to be. And by raising your energy in that environment, like what I did, I was the first one to start laughing, and then everybody else did. So uh, do that in that place. Don't take, uh, Even though the, these bosses t- sometimes take themselves way too seriously, just don't take that, that their attitude seriously. Don't, don't um, be nervous or worried about you know, that you're going to lose your job because if you stay in that higher vibration, that they're not going to do anything. You know, that, that vibration is going to hit them and they won't know what to do. They're just going to walk away. They have no way of processing that particular energy vibration. That's unfamiliar territory to them. So if you just continue to do that, then there is no, and there's no worry there. You're not manifesting what you were afraid of. You're no longer afraid of it. So if I had any advice to them, I would just be that way. What about this one, Chris? Hmm. Uh, Yeah, and Franco Di Nicola talks about be the observer. Step back and observe. Don't be get yourself deep in there emotionally in anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, (laughs) And now, what about this one? What was I going to ask? Oh, God, where's my head? Where's my, let me see. Oh, it was on the tip of my tongue. Oh, okay. I have noticed at least through the last five years, because of my energy, it's high. I get fired from jobs. I mean, I mean, is that a scenario nowadays? Because nowadays I don't feel bad. I know that this happened so many times. So is there instances still, right, where Mm -hmm. your energy is so high, (laughs) they, like, want you out of there right now, anywhere, you know, out of the town or whatever? What do you think? Yes, it does happen, you know, where they just cannot handle that vibration. There are those instances where they're, like, uh, where they will try to get as far away from that vibration as possible because they're not anywhere close to being ready for it. So I would say yours is one of those situations where um, you were you were fired, but you were meant to go on to greater things, even though you had to be part of that grind in some fashion. You didn't have to get sucked into it, like what you said. Franco Yankola said, "Be an observer in it, but also also I'm saying participate in it on an energy level, just to help raise it." And, but in some instances, there are those people that completely reject it, and then they'll reject you. You know, I. Yeah. You know, and I've had that happen a couple of times as well. I've had you know, situations. it's been a while before I would get kicked out, and they just took as much as I could. And then, yeah, I just want to say that to encourage people, if you're <laughs> if you're being jubilant and happy in the observer and still, 
<laughs> Somebody wants you to kick kick you out of Walmart or something. Just smile and wave and know that you had an impact, and they they they, they can't handle anymore for a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely, Elizabeth, and and the same thing has happened to me. I I was let go of, of several jobs. Really, the first day and the first week, they just couldn't they couldn't uh, stand my energy. <laughs> so it, it's good, and it's good to find a family that appreciates my energy. So this is this is good. Well, I think we we need to be. Uh, Wrapping up, uh, Chris, when will you next appear on on uh, the Diamond Network or a show that you'd like to mention to us? Um, I would say possibly uh, September sometime. I don't have a date uh, battened down just yet, but I will let you know. Okay, that's great. Well, is there anything that you'd like to conclude this being your last show in August? I believe it's it's been said tonight. I would just like to reiterate all that's actually been mentioned this evening. Absolutely. Hmm? Absolutely. Hmm? Candy thought you were going to repeat it all. <laughs> that's no, 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 I'm reading saying, your mind, I'll, Candy. I'll, I'll reiterate all of it. You know, by you know, it's it's been it's been said. You know, everybody's given the thumbs up, saying what uh, what was said tonight was was what was needed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're right, Elizabeth. You read my mind. <laughs> oh, well, I'm uh, uh, having a very busy time, but uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's good. Uh, I'm staying optimistic uh, myself and uh, trying to connect more and more authentically with. Uh, the people uh, I'm around and 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 uh, be uh, relaxed that when they know the authentic candy that they will still like to know the authentic candy <laughs> and I wish that for each of you because it's so relaxing to be your own true self and to and to connect with with people and 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 put technology in its place as a secondary thing in our lives and, and and remember that our people and the relationships with uh, with God and, and our peers are what's really important on this grand journey. Well thank you, Chris. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, have Candace. A, have a great time this month. Okay. You're welcome. You're Wonderful evening. Yes, thank you. Yeah, good night, everybody. Looking for healing or a change in your life to help you enjoy it more fully? You might benefit from a galactic energy reading and clearing from Chris Jacobs. Chris will work with you on a soul level to clear unseen negative influences, implants, programs, contracts, and energetic blocks. Chris Jacobs is a gifted energy healer. Contact him today at ChristopherStephenJacobs at gmail.com.